All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. On this page of notes, we are going to just begin introducing our idea of a rational function. We're gonna look at our parent graphs and then some simple sketches of graphs we can do with just our basic transformations. So let's start with our definition of a rational function here at the top of the page. A rational function is one that's in the form and we're typically going to say r of x for our rational function. And what's necessary is that we're gonna have this p of x over a q of x. And what's important is that p, and x, p of x and q of x are both polynomial functions. My abbreviation for functions there. Now we haven't formally reviewed the definition of a polynomial function, but um, you probably remember that from your Algebra 2 courses. If you don't, you can look forward to my 4.1 notes where I review the definitions of a polynomial function. So let's look at two different parent functions that we can um, study for our rational functions. So the first one is our simple r of x equals one over x. And this was in our library of functions and what we remember from that study is that we had some asymptotes that moved along both the x and the y axis. And we made a t-chart for this back in our library of functions where we had some points that were right there and we had some other points. And again, we actually calculated this t-chart back in the library of function, um, in our library of functions. And our branches, they're called branches of this polynomial function, approach each of these asymptotes, both the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes. Now, what we can see visually is that this parent function is odd. We can see that it has our nice rotational symmetry around origin. We can review our odd and even tests by calculating our f of negative x, and we see that we get one over a negative x, and we can calculate our negative f of x. Remember, we're gonna distribute that negative to either the top or the bottom. So on this one, we're gonna distribute it to the bottom. It'll make it easier for us to understand. And we can see that these match. These are thus equal. Therefore, we can see algebraically that this is odd. Now, another one that you probably haven't seen in the past before is one over x squared. All right, this is gonna change the shape of our graph a little bit. We are still going to have an asymptote at, um, we're still gonna have our asymptotes along the x and the y axis here. So we're still gonna have this asymptote and we're still gonna have this asymptote. And we could recreate a t-chart for this if we wanted, but I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to do an algebraic test to help you understand why this works out. So on our parent function for one over x squared, what we're going to have are both branches above the x-axis approaching the asymptotes. So what we can see on this one graphically is that it's even. Now, I didn't make a t-chart for this because I knew that this was gonna be even because ahead of time, I've already studied its symmetry from an algebraic perspective. So we're gonna look at our f of negative x. And what we know is we're gonna put one over We'll have our negative x quantity squared. Of course, when I square that, I'm gonna get right back to my one over x squared. So I can see that my f of x is equal to my f of my negative x. Therefore, my graph is supposed to be even. So I knew from an algebraic perspective this was supposed to be even. So once I put in my initial branch, I could just reflect it across. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at how can we use these parent functions to do some simple transformations? So down here at the bottom, I've got a couple um, examples. And what we wanna look at first, an example 2a is this negative three. And we want to understand what that's gonna do for us is that negative three is going to stretch our parent graph and that negative is going to cause it to reflect. So we're gonna stretch and reflect. 
And then we can also pick out this one and this four and understand that those for us are going to shift the asymptotes. So these are gonna cause a shift. So our asymptotes are no longer going to intersect at zero, zero. They are going to now intersect at negative four, positive one. So that's actually the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot my new asymptotes. So negative four, positive one, and I'm gonna put those in. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do my branches. The branches are going to, I just realized I forgot um, a letter up here in the word stretch, sorry about that. Um, we're going to put those branches in there so they're going to stretch them. I no longer want my branches to be in these two quadrants. My branches, since it's reflected, are now going to move their quadrants and they're going to be stretched. So instead of um, my initial points, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this with the shortcut, I can actually just count out. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then one off the asymptote will get me a new point. And then I can go one, two, three, and I can go one off the asymptote. And I can do this with um, a T-chart or I can actually formally translate all of the initial points that I had. I can do the same thing in the other quadrant. And then I can just sketch in my graphs, my two branches. Remember, I often refer to these as what I call a gretch. It's a blend of a graph and a sketch. It has some elements that are precise like a graph and has some just roughing in like a sketch. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our other form. So I've got this two here and that's going to just stretch. You'll we'll notice that we don't have any kind of a ref reflection this time. And again, we're going to have some shifting. So I've got a three here and I have my negative four here. So this is going to cause my asymptotes to shift. And they're now gonna move to a positive three and a negative four. So I'm going to put in my asymptotes. I always like to move those first. And if I wanted to calculate some exact points, I could certainly do that. But when I put in my two branches, since there's no reflection, they're going to be in these top two. I know they're gonna be in this top two because this is a squared in the denominator this time. So I'm gonna rough those in if I wanted to make some exact values and actually get some good x-intercepts, I could do that, but we're just gonna rough these in just to get a good idea of where these branches are supposed to be. And again, just roughed those in. I could certainly make them more precise if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that here in these notes. All right, on the next pages, we're gonna look into some more characteristics of our rational functions in some forms that are not in this standard form.